Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dream Leapers Inspiration. I'm your host, Harriet Cole. Very happy to be with you today. It's been a while since we've been live together in this way. I've missed you. So happy for those who can join me on today, which is President's Day. This is the week of President's Week. A lot of people have today off. For those listening later, you'll know this is the marker, the beginning of a week uh, for many school students, like my daughter, who have the week off. For many working folks who have the day off. And I was thinking about what does it mean to be able to have a day off, to pause, to make for a long weekend, to pause at a time when we have been so busy. Our lives are full, all of us. Our lives are very full. We are busy. And the question is, how do we spend our time when it's ours, when we have free time? What do we do with that time? So I thought it would be wonderful for us to talk about stillness. Now, you don't have to have a day off to embrace stillness, but imagine if you did. Imagine if on this day, right now, when we, many of us have been given the day off from work, what do we do with it? How do we fill our moments? Are we filling our moments with a lot of noise, with a lot of activity, with the noise of snoring because we're sleeping? What are we doing with our time? I want to recommend to us that at least for part of that time on this day and every day, that we welcome stillness, that we recognize that it is powerful for us to be quiet, to stop moving, to breathe deeply and to recognize that in the space of stillness, there's so much grace that lives. There's so much opportunity for growth because we can then look into the window of our own soul, of our own spirit and learn from ourselves. We're so often looking out somewhere, anywhere else to figure out how we should live, what we should do, what are the lessons before us? How many of us pause and say, hmm, what's inside of me? What lessons have I learned just from living? What lessons live within me because I'm connected to the creator? What can I learn now from myself that can support my journey? In order to figure that out, you gotta get quiet. And it's not just shutting your mouth, but it's slowing down and welcoming stillness, welcoming the ability for your whole being to just pause and breathe and be in the moment and trust that when you are silent, when you tell yourself, I'm ready to listen, that the messages will come. Not always an easy thing to do, absolutely not, but definitely a worthwhile thing to do. And so I want us to think about what that pause can look like today and any day. Today, many of us have off. What have you planned for your day? Have you planned? Can you carve out 10 or 15 minutes for stillness? Can you do that because you understand that it's worth it? And on a regular busy work day, can you carve out five to 10 minutes for stillness? What about when you start your day? I've talked to so many people, myself included, who are attached to these devices. First thing in the morning, you get up and you look at that device. Can you put the device down and choose to be still for five to 10 minutes? Can you choose to breathe deeply and allow yourself to sit with yourself. Whatever's going on, that you allow yourself to just be with you and see what you learn. Now, this is not difficult when we're feeling good, we're feeling happy, we feel like things are going so well. When this stuff's stirring up inside, when, when we didn't sleep well the night before because 
we remember. There's something we were supposed to do. There's something that's just stirring within us that's unresolved. When we know there's something we should have done and we didn't get it done, it's on the list and we haven't checked it off. In those moments, it can be really hard to get still because that stillness allows the thing that you've been hiding from yourself to come forth. But what if you allow it to come forth? What if you allow that thing that has been eating at you to emerge and then you invite yourself to look for the lesson, to look for the entryway to have a better experience, to resolve whatever it is that is bothering you? What if you do that? I'm telling you, it works. It really, really works. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but it works. Now, let me tell you this quote I found. There are many quotes about stillness that I like, but here's one from the writer and philosopher Herman Hesse. Within yourself is a stillness and a sanctuary to which you can retreat at any time and be yourself. Hear this. Within yourself is a stillness and a sanctuary to which you can retreat at any time and be yourself. You know, I, I thought about that because, as you know, I talk about my daughter who's 18. She's about to go away to college. We talk often about the friend dynamics, which, quite frankly, are more challenging than the studies, no matter how difficult the class is. Navigating human dynamics among teenagers, forget about it. And then I realized it's true for all of us. It, it, it doesn't end at the teenage years. When I listen to some of these stories, I realized the stirring that's going on within her spirit because there's so much drama. It definitely can rock her off her course. She's been practicing meditation since she was born. She's been in that space since she was born. And so I remind her, go to the place inside. Go to that source of stillness when all the stuff outside is not making sense. Because when you're in that swirl with other people and you look to this one or that one or that one or that one to find an answer, generally speaking, you end up in a mess. Because one person is one thought, another is another. The, the, the interplay of interaction with folks usually ends up making people not happy distraught, upset, feelings hurt, something. Any of you all have that experience now in your relationships? Many of us do. It seems quite amplified for teenagers. And so I say to her, don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. Instead, breathe. Instead, be still. Instead, allow your inner wisdom to emerge so that you can listen to what is that voice telling you? Because in that swirl, usually the voice is screaming, screaming for you to stop, you know, screech on the brakes, wait before you act, think, breathe, calm down. Don't just jump into the swirl and try to figure out what to do next. You know, these things that we talk about, these tools that we talk about here at Dream Reapers Inspiration, exists not just for us to think, oh, this is fun, this is something nice to think about. They work, you guys. I find that when you welcome your own power into your life and you harvest that and you nurture that, what happens is wisdom emerges at exactly the time when you really, really, really need it. And so going back to the friend dynamics that I'm talking about with my daughter and her friends, which is so similar to friend dynamics for folks of any age, instead of jumping in, instead of getting upset, instead of be, letting others push your buttons, calm yourself, center yourself, go inside, listen to that voice. Listen for wisdom. And sometimes it's just simply the breathing in and breathing out and allowing yourself to get calm 
allowing yourself to feel yourself in your body, that you're not having an out-of-body experience. You're not going, oh my gosh, what's going on? You're in it. And you're grounded. And you recognize that you have choices. You do not have to follow what someone else says. And this is true even for people who are dependents, even for my daughter and her friends. You may need to follow your parents' directions, but what is the wisdom inside that tells you how to carry yourself, how to respond in challenging moments? What is that wisdom? And if you don't tap into it, all you have is what someone else is telling you to do, which we cannot think of as the most valuable thing. It's not. The most valuable thing is for you to be grounded within yourself. And for parents out there who feel like they have to tell their children every single thing they have to do, that's not preparing them for being adults. We need to tell them, give them tools for empowering themselves. What can we tell our children so that they can see clearly? We teach them our values. We teach them how we think. We teach them by example what we do. And then we need to be able to help them to recognize how to tap into their own power. And how I have learned to do that is through meditation, through breathing, through anchoring oneself within your own self, not tethering yourself to someone else, not following someone who's got the bigger voice, but instead being your own leader, looking inside of you and deciding, mm -hmm, this is what I need to do so that I can be strong, so that I can be clear, so that I can make smart choices for my life. And, you know, I'm mentioning my daughter, but I want you to know we full grown adults, some of us at different levels of maturity, need the same reminder. How often do we find ourselves in situations where we got caught up because someone we care about, someone with influence, decided that we should come in their direction. Think about it. We live in a culture that is driven by marketing, which here's the shiny thing that you need to pay attention to. Here's the product you need to buy. Here's the place you need to go. Here's the clothing you need to wear. Here's the something outside of you that is required in order for you to be whole. That's the culture we live in. There are millions and millions, probably billions of dollars spent marketing to people so that they will spend money on something outside of themselves. And look, I've grown up in and worked in uh, the consumer editorial world for my entire career. So I understand it well. I enjoy many of the fruits of the creative world that markets to us. And I understand that we better not get caught up in it. We better not get caught out in it. That if we expect to live a grounded life, to be clear in our understanding of what we value and where we're headed, we have to anchor ourselves in that spirit that connects us to the divine. We have to practice stillness every day so that whatever is going on swirling around us, we can come back to center, come back to center come back to center. We need to do it for ourselves, our families, our community. When we get caught out believing that something outside of us is the answer, we get in trouble. And so on this day, when so many of us have off, I want us to be on to ourselves. Turn our attention inward. Pay attention to you. Pay attention to me. What do I need? What is within me that needs healing, that needs resuscitation, that needs cultivation? What is that? Listen to yourself. And how you can hear is when you're still. Listen to yourself. Listen closely. What is your being telling you that you need? 
And whatever that is, choose to do it. Choose to do that which will heal the parts of you that need healing. Choose to do that which will help flourish the greatness within you. And then when it's not an off day, choose it again. Choose to care for yourself. And when you do, I promise you, you will feel a different kind of fullness. Now, this doesn't mean that in challenging times and sad times and traumatic times that you don't have those experiences too. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, cure you from life and the emotions that come with life. It doesn't cure you from any of that. What I want you to understand is that this is your opportunity to step into your greatness and to be grounded in it. And we can do it every day. So I said five to 10 minutes, not long. Now, if you're already a meditator, go 20, go a half hour. But the reason that I'm saying five to 10 is that you do not have to do it longer, right? You can just do it a few minutes a day, sit in solitude, breathe, allow yourself to be still, allow yourself to feel your being, feel your body, feel your feet pressing into the ground, feel your lungs filled with air. Be still, be quiet, and listen. And when you do, pay attention to what the messages are that come. Welcome stillness, everyone. It is worth it for you, for your world. When we do that, you know what happens? There's less war. We're seeing all around the world, there's so much strife, so many people picking at each other. And if we look in our own world, you know, because often it's out there somewhere, we see, like what's happening in Ukraine. Oh my gosh, terrible. What's happening in Israel and Pakistan? Not Pakistan. <laughs> um, what I mean is that there are things happening all over the world. What's happening in your world? What is happening in your world right now? What can you do to make your world healthy? What you can do is to listen to be still, to allow the messages to come forth and then to pay attention to them. Be kind to yourself by welcoming stillness. Encourage others to do the same. Look at others through a compassionate lens because as you know, in your tender moments, in your tense moments, you're not always at your best. That's true for others too. This is my wish for all of us today welcome stillness tomorrow welcome stillness the next day welcome stillness and do yourself a favor after your five to ten minutes of meditation write down what came up for you what glimmering message came before you that you want to share it is worth it for you to record that every day do it for a week and see what comes up for you and next week Maybe you'll share it with me. So I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful day. And until next time, have a great day and make it count. Namaste.